polymerized chain reaction, or PCR, is an invention I had in about 82, 83. It's a way that you can produce a little teeny piece of DNA, a specific one, out of the whole genome and make as many copies of it as you wanted to, and there's no limit. Basically, it's a matter of putting together the, the trinucleoside phosphates, the things that the, the body would use in making new DNA, and you put in these two little things called oligonucleotides, which are like little single-stranded pieces of DNA. They're sort of pointing at it chemically, and they're saying, you, this sequence, make a copy of yourself every time, every time basically that I heat and cool this solution, go to that little spot and double it. It solves the two major problems in DNA chemistry, which was the specificity and amount. In 75, people had just discovered this, this the molecular cloning, where you could isolate a, a, a DNA sequence and you could put it in a, in a bacteria and you could make more and more and more of it. People thought about cloning as almost a miracle, but it took a long time. It would take a lab like mine, say, six months probably. It was such a neat, new, and exciting and spooky thing that nobody was looking for a quick way to do it. People thought, well, we're gonna have to get along with the fact that DNA is a very vital thing that we all wanna know about. You have a lot of it in total, but any one part of it, you'll never have enough to make it convenient to study. I was driving to Mendocino in the middle of the night, and I was, I was just cruising along in my patterns of thought. And out of that, the concept of PCR became just obvious to me. It was something I already knew how to do in my lab. I, it was a matter of heating and cooling a tube, you know. The first notion I had was just stop. And I stopped right in the middle of the road. And I said, wait a minute, somebody's going to come along here and hit you. And I wrote with a, a gas receipt that I had in my glove compartment, wrote on that. And it was just so ridiculously simple that it took me a long time uh, to really say, well, this would actually work. The next morning, fairly early, I went out to Jack's Valley store and bought a couple of bottles of red wine and, and drank them before I could go to sleep. It was a joyous kind of feeling, but it was also, I just doubted that it really would work. There's gotta be, any minute now, I'm gonna see what the problem is here. At that point, genetic diseases were starting to be discovered. We knew that there was an awful lot of information in every one of your cells. It was real obvious that we wanted that information and PCR made that possible in an incredibly simple format. Do you ever watch cop shows? And you know that they use DNA to trace somebody to see who was here, or who killed this person. All that stuff is first PCR, then you do the, the DNA analysis. The Nobel Prize came 10 years after the PCR was invented. It was a phone call one morning, you know, early in the morning, and I, I thought somebody was joking. It's an awesome thing. I probably was too young to really appreciate the awesomeness of it, but it, it was fun. Uh, they know how to put on a show. My mother came up to the front of the auditorium and like hugged me. She definitely was moved by the fact that one of her boys had got the Nobel Prize. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't think of myself prior to that as really caring all that much about what the world thought of me, but that they thought about me in that way, I started thinking, hmm, maybe I do care. <laughs> I mean, it's, that, that probably was unexpected. It, it, it gives you the feeling, if you ever feel bad for any other reason, you think, oh, at least I got the Nobel Prize. Nothing will completely destroy my, my self-worth feelings. That sort of creeps up on you after 20 years or so, that you, know, you think of yourself as a Nobel Prize winner. It, it makes a difference. I, th I don't think I've, I know anybody who got one that, didn't, that wasn't really affected by it.